Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 112, we'll take a look at a worksheet that I've developed and I use at work um, to help identify and validate architecture characteristics. And I really want to share with you this worksheet, which is on my website, and show you the dynamics of actually how it works and kind of do an example so we can actually see it in action. Now, when we talk about architecture characteristics as a little review, both the developer and the architect need to be concerned about the functionality of the application. Does it actually work? But the architect also has to be concerned about these architectural characteristics. Uh, some people call them illities or non-functional quality attributes. Uh, what makes this challenging is that there are so many of these. And this is one of the activities of a software architect. To identify for our particular situation our particular system, based on the business needs, which characteristics are important for this particular project. And these are critical for analyzing an architecture or even creating an architecture to determine which architecture is really most suited for our application. Even if it's still an existing one, we can validate and demonstrate that it is, in fact, the right architecture to support the kinds of characteristics we need. So what I'd like to introduce to you is a worksheet that I actually use in my daily job in consulting engagements to both identify and validate those architectural characteristics. So what I'd like to do is go over the worksheet with you and then let's do an example to show you the dynamics of each of the sections. Uh, provide the link on the landing page of this video, but it's um, at my website, developer2architect.com slash downloads, uh, worksheet.html. So let me actually discuss some of the sections in uh, the worksheet. The first is on the far left-hand side, which are the candidate architecture characteristics. Here in the worksheet, I've listed the most common characteristics, but of course I've provided uh, lines that you can write in other ones uh, that aren't on this list that may be important uh, to your particular system. Now the line uh, beside some of these indicate that those characteristics are related uh, to one another and some systems don't need both and so I've kind of helped analyze that choice of whether we truly need availability or fault tolerance or do we need both of those. Now, moving over to the far right-hand side, you see these implicit characteristics. I put these in gray. Uh, these are certain architecture characteristics uh, that we would obviously put into any architecture. Maintainability, security. We'd worry about time and budget in terms of feasibility, for example. Uh, these are all implied. Now, they stay over there until they become driving characteristics, and I'll show you that in the example we're actually going to do. Um, I'll, and then um, I was going to actually go through an example, but I just realized, oh, I'm going to do that in a little bit. <laughs> now, the main section here are the seven driving characteristics. Now, notice here I only provided in the worksheet uh, seven slots. Um, I, this is my personal number. I like to keep the number of architecture characteristics on any given system to no more than seven. Uh, too few, and the architecture really won't support the business needs. Too many, and you'll never find an architecture to support all those various characteristics. There's too many trade-offs between them. Uh, it's just been my experience over the past, well, 26 plus years of being a software architect uh, that seven uh, seems to be a really good number to not go over. Some projects, um, I work on systems that may only have five characteristics, and so it's not necessary to fill up all seven, but just no more than seven. Now, if you end up with seven and you still have some characteristics that you feel you might need, uh, that's when I leverage the far bottom right-hand side, which is others considered. I record those things that we considered but decided they weren't as important as others in the driving characteristics. Uh, these allow me, 
if everything's equal to say, well, based on these two decisions I need to make, or this decision, uh, do the others considered sway that decision one way or the other? And these are kind of those nice to haves. And then finally, um, I have select the top three. And I, this is usually through a collaborative meeting with the business stakeholders, the project sponsor, or product owner, uh, to say out of those seven max, uh, which are the three most important critical in this system? And I do this top three in any order. I don't try to prioritize these. By the way, the driving characteristics are not prioritized. These are just numbers, one through seven. Uh, but that top three helps me as an architect when I do need to make a decision or I'm faced with a decision uh, to really take these into consideration a little more than the others in terms of those trade-offs that I need to make. That is the worksheet. Let me show you an example. Let's say we're working on a really complex oh, bidding application. I don't know, an auction site. Let's use that as an example. And the first thing I'm going to look at in all of these are the implicit characteristics. I always look at those first to say out of all of these, are any of those driving characteristics critical to the success? Is it going to impact the structure? and my decision-making process. And I realize uh, that we only have uh, six months to get this system done. And as a matter of fact, our budget is quite constrained. And so this now moves into a driving characteristic. I take a look at security and realize, well, we, we store some credit cards, but that could be all handled through encryption and design. And the same thing with maintainability and uh, simplicity. There's nothing that forces those into a driving characteristic. Those are implied. Those are things that we'll obviously work on. Well, let's move over to the candidate architecture characteristics now. So between performance and responsiveness, I'd look at the situation and say it's more important that we actually respond quickly to the user as opposed to get the end-to-end -end process of that data through. And so I'm going to choose responsiveness. Notice that these are not in any given order, but that moves into the second slot. Between availability and fault tolerance, do I need both? And I realize that while fault tolerance is good, most of our services are bound to workflows. And so if one of them fails, well, the whole workflow fails. And so availability then becomes more important than fault tolerance. Again, some systems may need both. Between scalability and elasticity, I know that we're going to experience a lot of growth in this system. Our company is growing. And so for that, I'm going to choose scalability as an, as an architecture characteristic. Again, we define a lot of these in the first four chapters of our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture. Uh, between data integrity and consistency. They're both related, um, but here consistency really is a driving force about how important and critical is it that all the distributed data be exactly in sync at all times as fast as possible versus the in overall integrity of the data. And I realized that, well, consistency, in a lot of cases, both are needed, um, but I'm going to choose data consistency in that case. Now, I'm not interested in adoptability, extensibility, interoperability, but concurrency. We can have several thousand bidders all bidding at once, and the order matters. And so concurrency goes on that list. Again, we're not worried about the priority. Now, deployability is about risk of deployment, uh, ease of deployment. I don't expect a lot of changes, but testability is intriguing to me because I don't want to introduce bugs, and that's about the completeness of testing as well as the ease. I like that testability. I'm going to put it on here. We have no need for extraction. Uh, most of our workflows are simple, so there's no critical workflow processing, but we will be rolling this out based on locale, and so it's going to be regionally based, and that configuration is critical. This is how the worksheet works. I've already filled up the seven slots, which means somebody has to get voted off the island. And so this is an exercise in saying, is configurability more important than feasibility or responsiveness or scalability? And we go through the list and we're like, no, those are all more important, but we really need this. Well, what about testability? We don't want to introduce bugs, but we 
don't expect a whole lot of change. So watch what happens, everyone. Testability gets moved into the others considered and configurability takes its place. And that's one of the ways of restricting this list of the top seven or the seven driving characteristics. Now, that I'm done, I look at recoverability. I like that too, but that's more of a nice to have. It's not critical and it's not more important than any of the other drivers I have. So that got moved into others considered. Now I have a list and meeting with stakeholders, I validate this list of top seven and then have the business stakeholders select which are the three most important and critical out of all these. And what they selected after a lot of facilitation and collaboration were responsiveness, scalability, and data consistency. Now, the other ones are critical, but these three help me look at and make decisions within that architecture. So as I mentioned in our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture that I wrote with Neil Ford, uh, the first four chapters are really devoted to architectural characteristics. It's a great way to see how these interplay, the trade-offs between them and how they're defined. Also for more information, of course, you can go to my website and specifically uh, the lessons link, which is Software Architecture Monday, where the, all these lessons are housed. And so this has been Lesson 112, Architecture Characters Characteristics Worksheet. Um, please leverage this worksheet. It's a free download off of my website. The link is on the landing page here as well as in these slides. And use this worksheet to kind of identify those characteristics and keep that as your record about which ones were validated and decided. This way also periodically you can go back to those business stakeholders with this spreadsheet, with this worksheet, and say, well, this is what we decided last year. Are these still the most critical or driving characteristics, or has the business changed? So thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy this worksheet and the explanation of the dynamics of it. Uh, stay tuned in two more weeks for Lesson 113 in Software Architecture Monday. Uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>